Okay, so I'm going to start our lecture today for illustration and infographic design. Now, illustration can be defined as a visual explanation or interpretation of an idea, process, or concept. Illustrations are usually used in the in magazines, books, posters, video games, films, and anim animations. Illustrations are one component of the overall design. So as you can see here, we have a couple different variations. Um, illustrations are so broad and we can get into flat design, line design, um, hand-drawn. We're not gonna talk a lot about style today. Style is going to evolve as you get better and better at your design, but we're really gonna focus on how to pull these concepts. So as you can see here, there, these illustrations have similar um, figures in them, but they're drawn in completely different ways. Illustration is simply communication. It's just communication without words. And even sometimes it still has words in it too. So like design, an illustration is good if it gets across an idea to the right people at the right time. Illustration, as opposed to fine art, is meant to do a job, to clarify complex details or to convey the meaning or the emotion of the accompanying text at a glance. Is the style of the illustration in the same mood as the article, book, product, serious versus lighthearted, scary versus funny, scientific versus emotional? These are all things you want to consider when you're trying to um, think of a concept for your illustration. Do the social cues in the art match the values of the target audience? Is it conservative or edgy or fun, depending on who it's supposed to talk to? Can the target audience tell the meaning instantly? So you want to think about who your audience is, who you're trying to communicate with, and what you're trying to communicate. When illustrating, focus on creating specific images that can independently communicate a cohesive message. Develop illustrations using drawing, sketching, painting, and photographic skills. So illustration can come in a variety of different forms. It's very open um, and it has a lot of styles, but this image right here is from an article on depression and it's not directly communicating the message, but you really get the mood and the vibe and the feeling that comes across. So that's what it means when it says com independently communicate a cohesive message. This image stands alone without the article and you still get a sense for what it's about. So now we're gonna get into some tips for illustrating. Uh, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you have a good understanding of your subject. You need to read these articles, the text, whatever you're illustrating for and make sure you understand what the main message is. Um, if the illustration will be accompanying an article, text, or story, make sure you have a thorough understanding of that text. Know what the story is about. If it is meant to convey information, know the main message. So this is a cool example here. It's a really interesting illustration and it's for online data security. This one, um, gosh, it's for um, self-image. And then this one even has some text along with it and you get the overall message of communicating diversity and strength among women. So tips for illustrating number two, know your end specs. You don't wanna start drawing something and just start creating a beautiful work of art without knowing how it's going to be used. Is it gonna be horizontal? Is it gonna be vertical? Is it gonna be print? Is it gonna be web, full color? These are all questions you should ask and need to know before you begin your illustration. The last thing you wanna do is start drawing something and it doesn't fit in the space that it needs to go. If it's for an article, you should ask what size. Um, if you're working on the web, you wanna know um, that it's going to be um, high enough resolution and um, you just wanna make sure you know where your illustration is gonna go. You want, that way you can check your contrast among colors and various things like that, just so you have a good understanding and your illustration can come out the best it possibly can. So number three, and you guys probably all know I'm gonna say this, but start in your sketchbook, experiment with several ideas and create fast, loose concepts. 
Don't come up with one concept and then just try to force the illustration. Get lots of ideas out and start practicing so that you can come up with more creative solutions. And I added this image here because this is a good example. Um, this image would fit with an article about any kind of mental health or being like confused, any kind of um, intellectual mind, brain, science, like things about thinking, this um, illustration would accompany something like that great. It's um, a loose, fast, simple style, but it gets the message across. So you guys need to think about these things and practice in your sketchbook and come up with lots of different ideas before you start working um, on the actual final piece. So tip number four, explore various shapes. Um, there's all kinds of different styles, like I mentioned. Uh, there's a lot of flat illustration. It's super popular to use flat illustration right now. You'll see a lot of use of linear icons or line art. Um, you see little icons for food, beverage. Here we have, oops, sorry guys. These little people icons and even some puppies and they're done in this line art and flat color style. This one is has a lot of geometry and sharp edges for the illustrations and it conveys a totally different mood over here than these like round colorful little guys so again go back to your principles and elements of design and think about how these choices convey the overall mood of your illustration tip number five what message are you clarifying? What is the emotional state? Think of how this can be conveyed through principles and elements of a design. For example, calm equals balance. So if you wanna create an image that feels really calm, remember, use balance. This one even has symmetry. He's actually doing yoga or meditating. He's very calm. Um, they made sure this was symmetrical. He's floating, nice, calm colors. This one uses balance um, in the illustration. She has two plants on either side of her and she is folded in half so there's again some symmetry working here and this one I thought was um, really interesting because there's all of this chaos going on outside it's raining people are scrambling yet the overall mood is still has a calmness and a solitariness and despite all of the stuff going on outside the window there's the symmetry of the lights and the soft colors and it still has a quiet moment and a quiet feeling to it, despite all of the other movement and imagery. So those are some good examples. And then um, the opposite example of how something can be dynamic and have movement, remember rhythm, repetition, proportion, scale. This image here uses proportion and scale to really create that illusion of this dynamic moving basketball player. These two, it's, sym it's symmetrical, but oh, I keep doing that. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Okay, it's symmetrical, but these lines come in and they flow and they have, they create all of this rhythm and movement for them to converge and you really get a sense of that. This one actually says dynamic in it. That's why I put it in there and you can see the stacking of the objects, the tilts, the textures, and the colors all give that a sense of movement, even though it's just shapes and letters stacked on top of each other. But the tension between each one and the way it's stacked really gives it a dynamic feeling. Okay, so tip number six, consider the scene from different angles. Who is the viewer? Um, is the perspective from the viewpoint of how a small child would see it, or is it the perspective of a bird flying above? Think about these choices. Think about who's looking in on the scene. Um, this trick will help you to understand which of the angles will be best, will be the most beneficial for the goal and the message of the illustration. So don't think about drawing everything straight on all the time. That may not be the best viewpoint or the best way to really communicate your message. So this one is an overhead view. This one is actually looking from the ground up and she's looking up at these birds. Um, and this one I thought was really interesting too. It's almost got a fisheye effect. It's like there's a GoPro or somebody's watching this um, from that low dynamic viewpoint where you see the skateboarder coming in. And so these just all have three really interesting, sorry guys, back, uh, 
three really interesting perspective choices. So don't just draw everything straight on all the time. Think about um, perspective and who the audience is. Okay, tip number seven, color. Uh, go back to your color theory and use color thoughtfully and inten intentionally. Um, a thoughtfully selected color palette will help to strengthen the idea and message. It will set the appropriate mood and put accents on what is major. So um, I just put three illustrations in here. They're all using color in different ways. This one has a complimentary but soft color palette. It really creates like a a warm moody vibe and again I think this one has an interesting perspective or angle um, this one has a lot of motion and dynamic movement and it uses bright colors throughout and then black to kind of guide you through because it has a, a line art feeling and then this one has bold bright colors and again it's another um, woman empowerment graphic but it's bold and um, it's just giving you a nice sense of femininity yet strength in that color palette. So also think about color palettes like setting the tone. If we go back, this one has a lot of blues. All of these actually have blue in them for calmness. The dynamic color palettes all have orange and reds. And then this one actually uses red warm tones, but instead of creating a dynamic um, environment, it kind of creates a warm, fuzzy feeling. So there's all different ways you can use color here to convey that. But don't forget how important color is when you're trying to communicate your overall message. Okay, so this brings us into project seven. So for your project, I want you guys to create your own illustration or infographic focused on what's happening in the world or in your life today. I think this is a really great opportunity for you guys to make something significant and maybe some of you need an outlet to process what's going on. So if you wanna make it personal, you can, or if you just like to look up a statistic or a fact or an informational graphic, you guys are going to be doing that for project seven. So I pulled a few here. I think this one is a great example. I mean, who hasn't been watching the news and feeling that anxiety? And that's what it's trying to communicate. There are no words in this image right here, yet you get the sense of anxiety and fear that's coming from the media at her all the time. This is just a nice clean wash your hands and get the germs away graphic. And then you will also see on the um, week 12 um, module that I put a link to some of the New Yorker uh, illustrations. They always have an illustrated cover. And I think this cover um, from one of the most recent issues is really beautiful and tells a really dynamic story in one image and you really get a sense of what's happening here and it's from an interesting perspective on the, it's just an interesting take and um, it's a perspective that probably isn't shared a lot about this virus and what's happening in healthcare workers and the fact that they have families and they have lives and they're going in and working every day. So I just thought this was really well done and another, again, this one's really elaborate. You guys do not have to take it to a scale like this and I'll show you on the next page some other options and directions you can go. If you're overwhelmed or confused by this, as always, please ask me and I will be here to help you. But these are just some examples I pulled um, that I thought were really good. So you could also go this direction. Um, these are things I pulled from my Instagram feed due to things that I follow. I get stuff like this popping up in my feed all the time. But you can always make it more of an informational infographic and combined illustration into that. Um, so. Oops. So this one, I'm watching too much TV, blah, 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 and it's copied. This is really simple, yet really effective. And um, these are all mostly about mental health. Um, yeah, these are all mental health graphics. They're just some examples I pulled. You can make it about anything. You can make it, um, and I'll show you another real life example of something that I've made recently. But um, you could break it down into steps. You can add text to it. And you can take something that is a very common image like this pyramid. We've all seen the food pyramid. We grew up being taught that. And you can adapt it and make it something all your own. 
Um, I think this one's also really cool what you choose to focus on and it conveys a message really simply. So you guys could go this direction and do one image, no text, that conveys a message or it tells you a story. Or you can go this direction and actually add some text to it and make it more of an informational graphic combined. So that is my lecture PowerPoint for the week. And then let me show you this as well. This is actually something that I made recently for Kaiser. And they had a version of this that was pretty messy and I adapted it to make it um, a little more um, dynamic and easy to read and just um, make people want to actually understand. And so this shows the power of social distancing. And this is, uh, this would have been no changes in our interactions and this would have been 50% changes and this shows you what it does in 30 days and how the virus would spread. So you could also do something like that if you want to look up a statistic or you want to take something like this and make it um, more factual. You're totally welcome to do something like that or you can go in a more personal direction. But there's all kinds of stuff out there right now. There's all kinds of information being shared and it's just a really good way to process what's going on and take it and turn it into um, a piece of work that you guys can use. So that's what I want you to do this week for project seven. And I'm not gonna go over any technical skills this week. This one is really wide open creatively, but I do want you guys to Ask me if there's something that you want to know. If I go, actually go back to my PowerPoint, um, these are hand-drawn, digitally illustrated, and you can do that, especially if you guys have an iPad or like a digital pencil and you want to go that route, you can. Um, this is very similar to the pen tool technique I taught you. Um, this is an illustrated vector graphic. And you can also do things like like this, which is actually very hand-drawn, um, but you have to scan it in and turn it digital. Um, and then things like this are done in Illustrator. And even things like this. So if we look at this graphic right here, and I go into Illustrator, I want you guys, when you know what your topic is and what you're gonna do, I want you guys to think about how it's made. So I've taught you guys how to make things that look a lot like this, um, but even things that look a lot like this, these are just shapes being combined. So if I take this into Illustrator, I'll show you a few quick things. So if we zoom in here, and this is gonna be pixelated because I just pulled the JPEG over. But these are clearly germs and they don't have to be accurate to convey the sense of being a germ. But you can see here that by layering, a couple different colors, you get something a little more dynamic than just a flat color illustration. And again, this is quick. I'm not gonna spend the time to do it exactly, but you guys can do things like that to create dimension. You can use a gradient to create dimension over here. So say I wanted to do it this way. I can use my gradient palette and I could add two greens in there. You just pull down the colors that you don't want, change it to radial. Then you can even click on this gradient tool here and you can stretch and twist it until you have it where you want it to go. And then you can adjust all your shapes like that. You can also use the Pathfinder tool. You will see it under Properties.
So see, I have these two things selected and Pathfinder pops up. So what Pathfinder is good for, if you know what you're making, um, you can combine shapes to make other shapes. So you wanna break down complex like things. You don't have to actually physically draw everything with the pen tool, like come around here and make um, each water splash and draw around there and think of what you're doing. If you use your sketchbook first, you absolutely can, and that makes it a lot easier. If you've already sketched everything out specifically and you just wanna go in and trace your illustration, you can totally do that. Um, but you can also think about breaking these things down into simple shapes. So one of the quickest things I like to do if I'm ever making a heart is I combined two circles to start my heart. I will actually make it red so it feels more like a heart and I take these two circles and with the pathfinder over here I just compound the shape and then I take my pen tool and I get rid of these shapes or these anchor points and then I pull that point down and adjust the points and that is a really quick easy way to make a heart in Illustrator using Pathfinder. And this similar process could be applied to things like creating a hand, which could be a circle and a rectangle combined. Or countless other things. So as I mentioned, I'm not going to get a lot into technique this week. I want you guys to explore that and have a lot of creative freedom. What I want to see is your process on concepts, where you take your concept and then you execute it in a really clear, easy to understand way. Um, and that's it. So I hope that explains it. I will be on at six today if any of you need live in-person help. Okay, hope you're having a good week. Bye.